Welcome to Eye on the Tigers News. I'm Kennedy Lamb. And I'm Shannon Corey. Thanks for being with us today. Here's the news we've been following for you. Promising to help America's middle class, Barack Obama on Monday sent Congress a record $4 trillion budget that would hammer corporate profits overseas and raise taxes on the wealthy while boosting tax credits for families and the working poor. Obama's budget also would steer hundreds of billions of dollars to the nation's crumbling infrastructure of roads and bridges, help provide two years of free community college, and reverse the across-the-board automatic budget cuts that, would ha that have slammed the Pentagon in nearly every government department. We ask a lot of you. The least we can do is have your backs. That's what I'm going to keep on doing for as long as I have the honor of serving as your president. I have your back. And I'm going to keep on fighting to make sure that you get the resources you deserve. I'm going to keep fighting to make sure that every American has the chance not just to share in America's success, but to contribute to America's success. That's what this budget is about. It reflects our values and making sure that we are making the investments we need to keep America safe, to keep America growing, and to make sure that everybody is participating, no matter what they look like, where they come from, no matter how they started in life, they've got a chance to get ahead in this great country of ours. Passage will be difficult as both houses of Congress are controlled by the Republicans. The hearing surrounding the 1994 kidnapping of teenager Heidi Allen resumes this morning in Oswego County Court. This will be day six of the hearing before Judge Daniel King, who will decide if a jury's conviction of Gary Thibodeau for the kidnapping and presumed killing of Allen should be overturned and a new trial to be held. Thibodeau, who maintains his innocence, was convicted by a jury in 1995 and sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Testimony in the murder trial of ex-NFL star Aaron Hernandez is set to resume with the girlfriend and mother of the man Hernandez allegedly killed taking the stand. Proceedings began last week but were suspended Monday when another snowstorm hit. The former New England Patriots standout is accused of the June 2013 killing of Odin Lloyd who is dating his fiancée's sister. Marion Suge Knight, the former hip-hop mogul, now charged with murder, attempted murder, and hit-and-run, is expected to appear in court on Tuesday. Prosecutors filed the charges against Knight on Monday, alleging he intended to run down a friend and another man after an argument on a movie set on Thursday. He is scheduled to appear in court to be arraigned on four felony counts, which include murder in the death of 55-year-old Terry Carter, attempted, willful, deliberate, and premeditated murder involving 51-year-old victim Clay Bone Sloan, plus two hit-and-run charges. American Sniper shot down another box office record. Its $31.9 million is the biggest Super Bowl weekend gross ever. Hollywood often avoids competing with the Super Bowl as movie-going falls dramatically on Sunday, but American Sniper has proven an unlikely, unlikely sensation. It has now made $248.9 million in six weeks. Not really sure we needed a furry bucktooth rodent to tell us what we already knew, but Puxatani Phil said Monday that we're in for six more weeks of winter. The German legend has it that if the furry rodent sees his shadow on February 2nd, winter will last another six weeks. If not, spring comes early. There's nothing in the weather recently that would lead anyone to think we're ever going to have warmer weather. With some of the upcoming details, here's Alyssa Greco. Not really sure we needed a furry bucktooth rodent to tell us what we already knew, but Puxatani Phil said Monday that we're in for six more weeks of winter. The German legend has it that if the furry rodent sees his shadow on February 2nd, winter will last another six weeks. If not, spring comes early. There's nothing in the weather recently that would lead anyone to think we're ever going to have warmer weather. With some of the upcoming details, here's Alyssa Greco. It may seem difficult to believe, but we should feel temperatures moderate a little today and tomorrow, moving the thermometer more towards what is normal for this time of year. We can expect temperatures in the mid-20s Tuesday and then possibly mid-30s on Wednesday. This will be short-lived. A reinforcing shove of cold air will sweep through the area beginning Wednesday night and we'll be in for some frigid conditions for the end of the week before maybe some more moderate temperatures for the weekend. As far as snow goes, no big storms 
We should see some nagging snow each day of the week, an inch or two tonight, and then again for Wednesday. One of the most exciting Super Bowls in history will now lead into days of scrutiny and criticism. With more on the game, here's Patrick. It was billed as the tightest Super Bowl matchup in history, and for the most part, it did not disappoint. One last play from just one yard away was the difference as the New England Patriots escaped with a 28-24 victory. Two days later, Seahawks coach Pete Carroll was still stunned by the outcome while defending the decision to call a pass from the one-yard line in the Super Bowl's closing seconds, a chance that will long be debated. And it will leave everybody asking, why in the world with Marshawn in the backfield did the Seahawks throw the football? So close to another celebration, so close to becoming the next NFL dynasty. An estimated 114 million people watched the New England's thrilling win over Seattle, and of course the commercials that come with the game, making it the fifth time in six years that a Super Bowl game has set a world record for the most watched event in U.S. television history. Hi. My doctor called in a prescription? Uh, yes. You're not Greg. I'm sort of Greg. We're both over 50 years old. We both used to own a Pontiac Aztec. We both have a lot of experience with drugs. Sorry, pharmaceuticals. So, say my name. Sort of, Greg. Esurance helps make sure you only pay for what's right for... Cleveland Browns quarterback and former Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Menzel has entered a rehabilitation center for unspecified reason, an advisor said in a statement released by the team on Monday. The 22-year-old quarterback's pension for partying followed him from college into the pros, and Menzel's nightlife has been well chronicled by both social and mainstream media. SU's basketball team will look to get back on the right track tonight when it hosts Virginia Tech, a team that has already beaten earlier this season. The Orange are 5-3 in the ACC with the toughest part of its brutal schedule yet to come. Tip time is later than usual. 9 p.m. to accommodate to ESPN2 schedule. Mexico diver Noah Galuzzo has everything going his way right now. Just two weeks after setting a Section 3 record, the junior dominated the league diving meet last weekend with a score of 676 from the five-judge panel. On his final three dives, Galuzzo earned a perfect score of 10 on the card of one of the five judges. On his final effort, a front one and a half with two twists he received 10s from three of the judges. Galuzzo has already qualified for the state diving meet set for February 27th at Ithaca College. Both Mexico basketball teams take to the court tonight hoping to keep their playoff hopes alive. The boys host ESM while the girls head to ESM. Both teams are on the outside looking in but still have enough games remaining to make a run at qualifying. The boys will also host state-ranked Cortland tomorrow night in a makeup game. Sarah Petricola has a peek on what's on the calendar. Here's a look at the calendar. A community forum on education will be held on Thursday, February 5th, 2015, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at North Syracuse Junior High School. This forum is for all school districts in the Onondaga, Cortland, Madison, and Oswego Boces. The district will provide transportation for any community members wishing to attend. Buses will be leaving Mexico Middle School parking lot at 5.30 p.m. and will return to Mexico directly after the event. Of course, today began the second semester. Second quarter grades are expected to be mailed out on Thursday. And finally, the fourth annual True Beauty event will take place on Thursday emphasizing that beauty is something that is far from just skin deep. And finally today, Nathaniel is here with our history lesson. On this day in history in 1913, the 16th Amendment to the Constitution providing for a federal income tax is ratified. In 1917, the United States broke off diplomatic relations with Germany which had announced a policy of unrestricted submarine warfare. In 1959, rock and roll stars Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P. the Big Bopper Richardson died in a plane crash near Clear Lake, Iowa, known since then as the day the music died. 
and in 1994, the Space Shuttle Discovery blasted off with a woman, Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Eileen Collins, in the pilot seat for the first time. Collins is a Syracuse University graduate. For the staff of Eye on the Tigers News, thanks again for joining us. I'm Kennedy Lamb. And I'm Shannon Corey. Have a good day.